Hey everyone, it's Dr. Morales here. I'm very glad to bring you a special interview with one of my favorite students, Walter, who's had a tremendous success improving his atrial fibrillation and improving it naturally. And we're gonna talk all about why he did it, how he did it, and how his AFib is doing right now so that you can better get those same results in your own life. Walter, thank you for taking a few minutes of your time. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, uh, thank you. So it's been a few months now since you signed up for the Take Control of AFib program now, but why don't we forward, go backwards, you know, before you ever signed up for it, how long did you have AFib for? Like how long were you living with AFib before you signed up for the program? I was probably living, for, living with it longer than I realized, you know, because I had like some um, dizziness and some palpitations, but it was always like passing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, and that came to me afterwards, after, you know, I uh, basically was going through the process. Uh, but uh, basically it was on um, December 8th of 2020. Uh, you know, I woke up, my, woke up and I felt like there was a chipmunk uh, running around my chest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if anything, if this is a sign of anything going worse, I think I need to be in the hospital. And even though... During COVID, it was the last place I wanted to go. It was the place I felt like I had to be. So I woke up my wife and I asked her to drive me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got to the emergency room and explained what was happening to me, uh, the triage doctor said, you probably have AFib. Mm -hmm. So the word AFib then was really the first time I really, you know, identified with it was right at the entrance of the ER. Okay. So, and that was only what, maybe about a month or six weeks before you decided to sign up for the program? Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Because they immediately put me on, I left the hospital with three scripts, uh, prescriptions, and I, they made me feel worse. I felt like, you know, I felt pretty good before the day I went into the hospital, but I wanted to have, at least be back to that par, not to feel like, why am I feeling worse? Mm -hmm. And immediately was struggling with weight gain and fatigue and joint aches. And I just felt that I wasn't in the right solution. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's many people who feel that way, as you're describing, you know, the medications are good. They may prevent you from going into the hospital. And obviously, you don't want to go to the hospital and have to go to the emergency room. So it certainly can reduce symptoms for a lot of people. But obviously, no medication is perfect. People either feel tired or they're gaining weight. You know, sometimes uh, medications are just as bad as, you know, has many issues a, as well. Um, so what were your interactions with your own cardiologist back home? You know, were you given options where you said, this is just the medications you're going to be stuck with? Like what kind of, what were those interactions like with your cardiologist? Well, I had two interactions. The first time I went back, uh, was like a week after my hospital, I saw the cardiologist, who is my main cardiologist, who I had seen a little over a year prior, because I, like I said, I was fati feeling fatigued, you know, and I did the stress test, and I, I had an excellent stress test. I had no high blood pressure. There w I wasn't diagnosed with AFib, um, but I had a connection already with this doctor. And so when I went, came back right after the hospital the following week, when I saw him, I was saying to him, they did another uh, EKG and I was still in AFib. And um, he was just like, and I, so I had all my questions. I was like, so can I drink coffee? You know, what should I be doing? He goes, yeah, you could have, have one cup of regular coffee, have one cup of decaf, because basically I have to backtrack. I'm a two coffee drinker. Generally, I was anyway then. And um, the night that I went into the hospital, I had an extra cup of coffee. And I'm talking, I drink mugs of coffee. I don't drink cups of coffee. They're like 12 ounce mugs. So I, I had an extra cup of coffee. I did um, uh, suffer from uh, some weight gain from comfort food, from being quarantined at home. I'm a chef. I was exploring menu. So uh, but I still had low blood pressure. Um, and anyway, so he basically said, you know, um, we need to, my cholesterol level was kind of high. Um, I wasn't working out as much as I should have been. 
Um, I was eating incorrectly. And, you know, I felt like I was on these medications and I figured, let, let me see what I can do on my own um, for a month. And then went back on uh, January 6th, just a little less than a month later. And oddly enough, that morning I was working out with my son and a couple of other guys. And I was doing these wind sprints on the track field. And it was like I found out like it felt like someone kicked me inside my chest. And I was being tested that day. If I was still in AFAB, they were going to do, they were going to shock my heart the following day. And basically, I self shocked myself. Really? Wow. With exercise. He goes, You must, you're not in AFAB. Because yeah. I explained to him, and I was like, I'm done with exercising. And he goes, No, 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 that was good. It was good. It was good what you did. So I um, was still, st- I, was with this new uh, cardiologist, his associate, much younger guy. And I was complaining about being on the medications and the weight gain and gas. And he was like, basically, he was like, it's better to be struggling with weight gain and being gassy than to, you know, suffer a stroke or go into a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And he basically told me that there was no fountain of youth and that I just had a surrender and this was where my life was. And I was furious, you know, I was just like, that's not what I wanted to hear. So then I was just reaching to everyone that I possibly knew that had AFib. And a friend of mine told me that he had a friend that sought out how to um, deal with it naturally. And he was taking some sort of uh, some sort of grain or something. Uh-huh. But in that research, I came up to your site. Yes. And I was fascinated by it. And I watched your uh, introductory mm-hmm. and I kind of liked it. Uh, and I sat on it for a, a couple of days and I said, you know what? I'm follow through and I took the class and I was diligent. You know, yeah. I just watched every one of your episodes and I was diligent. So and not- it, so- it sounds like, you know, first going back to Cardell, it sounds like that day that, you know, you went there and he said, you're just going to be on these medications, you know, just it's better to do the medicines than to have a stroke it was the day that you really said, I need to find another option and try to find something myself. Right. And I, on my own, I went and, um, and I was getting, um, with, uh, My wife is uh, a lab tech and I was seeing this off the, so I was getting my blood work done every month and I dropped, uh, my cholesterol dropped over a hundred points the first month. That's great. Just by, just by being completely, uh, but my, my, the low one was too low Mm -hmm. and basically I had to up my fitness, but you know, with, Still being so, I I did a temporary. I got off the um, statins. Is that right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Cholesterol medicine. Yeah. Cholesterol medicine. I got off that to see if if you know diet could hold my and it did. Okay, good. So, That's good here. you know, important thing about natural treatments when it comes to AFib and heart disease. You know, you talked about one of your somebody you knew about people kind of assume that it's a supplement or herb and, you know, and that that's going to improve your heart disease or your AFib. But the real natural treatment, the one that actually is work has evidence has been done in trials. You clearly see it works, takes time and it takes commitment, you know, and that's what I try to present in this, in this program, things that people can, I hopefully can stick with like you and let you know that cheating a little bit is okay. You have to be able to do it long-term. You have to be able to do it for, months and years if you really want it's changing your lifestyle it's not just a fad diet that you do for about a month or so and then you go back to what you're doing you have to stick with it and then it, the part of that is just cheating every once in a while there's a lot of delicious food out there i i am not perfect you're not perfect but yet right, right. you still have tremendous benefits if you can be good most of the time and just control the cheating a little bit and still so that way you don't miss out on things you don't miss out on family meals or people that like other th- types of types of foods but you can still st- stick and be consistent most of the time what about your afib as as your did your afib get better pretty quickly did it take a month or two like how? Well, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of funny because i was still feeling 
not AFib, but I was feeling flutters. Yeah. You know, like when I went to bed at night, I would feel like, and I always had that predominantly most of my life. You know, I was diagnosed when I was born with um, a heart murmur. So I always thought it was that. But I would get like a little flutter. And um, so from January, from the beginning of January, after I got was diagnosed that I was off AFib, I was still taking the meds. I got off the statins at the end of February and um, I reduced. And I told you that my cardiologist reduced my metoprolol uh, for the month of March. And I figured I would do it reduced for one month. And um, it lessened the flutters a little bit. Mm -hmm. And at the end of March, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm weaning myself and see what, see what happens. And instantly, since March 31st, I can't count on one hand how many flutters I've had. Yeah, awesome. awesome. So maybe a, None. Flutter, a little bit of flutters the first month or two, and then nothing for several months now. Nothing. Good. And I've periodically, you know, I, um, and the fortunate thing was I was out of, I was, I was temporarily, I put myself temporarily out of work because I finished a very stressful summer as a private chef. I went in, you know, we were still in COVID. My kids have kids at my grandkids. Childcare was an issue. So I kind of like was using, um, like eight or nine months to kind of like, um, help them out, you know, right. during the school year. And it also gave me the opportunity to work, you know, do research on my diet, mm -hmm. to make better consciousness, to work on my fitness. Right. Um, you know, I dropped about 25 pounds from January and I gained the first month from Jan December 8th from when I was diagnosed, when I was put on those meds, so I went back to the doctor and I really went on a strict diet, yeah. except for maybe cheat a little bit during Christmas week. But I gained 12 pounds on the meds. Wow. And I was like, this is no, this is this is not working for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always been an athlete and I'm, you know, right. self dietitian You know, I, I know what healthy food is. Yeah. I was like, there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. And you gave me that confidence to say awesome. there's a better way. There's and then I, like I said, then I continued and, you know, yeah. sought out every bit of information I could. Yeah. It's driving everyone crazy a little bit there for a while. Now, you could have done this all on your own. You're obviously very knowledgeable about nutrition. You know, you could have just gone and judged, figured it out on your own. But what made you want to sign up for this program? Or what is the benefit of the program? Do you think that it's because I present the guide and help people get a framework? It's You gave me the confidence. Right. By by explaining each step of what, you know, even with the pyramid of mm -hmm. what are, are how we're going to deal with this. You know, we're going to deal with it, you know, with nutrition, with fitness and medicine was the smallest in the top of the part. Yeah. And basically, I needed to know that I, it took the worry away. Yeah. You know, yes, I probably could have done a lot of the research myself. But you gave me the confidence and, and, you know, I would go back when I felt like in a little insecure, I'd go back and I'd watch one of your, you know, videos. I was like, okay, I'm back on track. I'm back on track because knowledge is, knowledge is the tool and the comfortability. And, you know, and I was alone, you know, it wasn't like, you know, I'm going to a 12 step AFib program, you know, every day where, you know, where, you know, admitting that I have AFib and that, you know, I'm, you know, powerless over my heart. I have power over my body and my heart is functioning well. My health is functioning well. Um, actually recovering the last eight weeks from a broken collarbone, which has hindered my fitness, but I can still walk. Okay. You know what I mean? I can, st I can still wade in the water now. You know, it's like you don't give up. You, you always have to figure out what you don't say screw it, you know, keep on track, keep on track. And that's what you did in your videos for me. It was like, be consciously aware that these are the natural ways. It's a long-term process. It's a long-term commitment. I don't want to be on medicine um, the rest of my life. I'm still on Eloquist. Um, 
I made a commitment to stay on it because uh, a lot of people were t telling me that's the right thing to do. And, uh, but I see my cardiologist again in September. I have good insurance now. It's covering the eloquence, but it's, it's very expensive drug. Oh, yeah, for sure. Very expensive. And, I, you know, I want to retire someday. I don't want to be, you know, using my travel money and my, you know, you know yeah. for a blood thinner that I don't necessarily right. need if I can figure out something, a better way for myself. Right. Exactly. And if I can't, then I'll surrender to that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight because you, you put on the gloves for me. You right. told me that there, there is a way to uh, focus on my health. And if I wanted uh, to deal with my health issue naturally, there, there is a way of doing it. Exactly. So Walter, there are probably people watching this video right now who are maybe thinking about signing up for the program. They wonder if it really could work for them. So what would you say to these people? You know what? Even uh, people that don't even have AFib, like, you know, I'm, I just turned 65 this past week. Anyone that watches your, you, it's not just an, our heart is our muscle. Our heart is our, you know, what puts the fuel. It's, you know, why wouldn't we all want to, you know, have a better circulatory system? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we want the best? I want to see my grandkids graduate and, you know, and start their life. I want, you know, the best out of my senior years. I've worked hard, you know, my whole entire life to get to this point. I don't want to surrender and say, oh, now, now I'm like a couch potato and I got to take these three pills a day. And those three pills will turn into six. If I don't do anything, I've seen it. I've seen it with other people. They don't, if you don't address your, if you're not a proxy for your own health, you're going to surrender to medications. Yeah. Big Pharma is going to grab hold of you and you are going to be a product. I've seen it. I have relatives that are there and, I just don't want that. I don't want that for me. And I'd rather be a powerful example to them than them to be an example to me. Yeah. And, it's and you brought out a good point. Even though I focus this program on AFib and all the research about natural treatments for AFib, like the benefits are universal. I mean, I've had people tell me about improves their blood pressure, loses weight, improves cholesterol. Healthy eating is healthy eating, improves your body and your health in many ways. It's just a matter of having a framework and a system that can help you get started and help you keep you motivated and help you go down the right path and understanding that commitment is probably the most important thing about, about all of this. So Walter, I really appreciate you taking a, a few minutes of I your just time. want to add one more thing about, oh, you know, my wife said to me the other day that she's, she's actually now that we've really have done this for a long time. She likes our diet system now. Good. She likes the way that we're addressing our our diet and our health and she feels better she's Good. benefiting from this Good. so it like you like we just said it's not just for us people that were diagnosed with afib it's you know for, this is a lifestyle change that is healthy and i'm so grateful uh for you to guide me and you know and i if i jump in obviously you hear it in me i jump in 100 yeah. yeah. percent and but 80% will help. 60% will help. Whatever you can do and whatever you're willing to do, it's going to be beneficial to you. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I agree. And I appreciate you taking a few minutes of your time. And I really think it was the example that you said, the, the changes you made, I think are going to help a lot of other people as well. So thank you for taking the time and sharing your story. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Um,